Don't you wish there were something you could do to extend your life significantly by doing something that's not that strenuous? I know I'd certainly love to do that. Uh, you may know that science has known since the 1940s that if you calorie restrict an animal for the majority of its life, it actually lives significantly longer, sometimes up to 30 to 40 percent longer. But there's a problem with the paradigm of caloric restriction. That's what I'm going to talk about in this video. There may be an even easier way to get the life extension benefits touted when it comes to caloric restriction without actually having to starve to death for the rest of your life to attain it. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician, and I've been interested in life extension uh, since Dr. Hayflick published his book, Let's talk about this. Using caloric restriction, scientists have been able to extend the lifespan of many different animals over the decades. This has been proven in mice, hamsters, dogs, fish, uh, invertebrate animals, and even in yeast. If you restrict their food intake, they live longer. But And there, there are actually some human beings out there in the world right now who are trying to live a life where they eat up to 40% fewer calories a day than they would like to eat. Now, if that sounds like a, spe a special kind of torture to you, I totally agree. And if that's what I had to do to extend my life, then I wouldn't do it. But let's talk about this. So if you have animals in captivity, like dogs or chipmunks or rodents, hamster, hamsters, mice, how do you feed them a calorie-restricted diet? Do the researchers came in, come in three times a day and give them a tiny breakfast, a tiny lunch, and a tiny dinner, and then a tiny little snack in between each meal? No. Researchers are very busy. They don't have time for that. So the, the control mice are given an ad-lib diet, which means they've got a, a bowl of food 24-7 in their little cage. And so they can eat whenever they feel like it. And indeed, they, they nibble all during their feeding hours. They eat multiple times from their ad-lib diet. The calorie-restricted re animals, uh, without exception that I can find, and I've looked at the literature quite a bit, at the beginning of their feeding period, whether that's dawn or dusk, they are given a single serving of their calorie-restricted meal. And typically, the animals eat all of that. They scarf it up, and then that's it. They're done for the day. They don't get a second meal. And they don't split these meals up for the animals. They just get one meal a day. Now, if any of you guys have been eating a low-carb, keto, ketovore, carnivore diet, you may have heard of eating one meal a day before. We call it OMAD. So now the question becomes, is it the caloric restriction that's causing these animals to live much, much longer. In some cases, in the, in the smaller animals, almost doubling their lifespan. Or is it the time-restricted feeding? Is it the one meal a day? And I've actually talked to a, a couple of researchers in this field, and when I asked them that question, they were like, well, no, no, it's the calorie restriction. And then I asked this question, how do you know? How can you tease that out of the data if you're just feeding them one meal a day how do you know it's not the time-restricted eating? And they're like, um, yeah, uh, and they don't have an answer. And I'm not, they, these are very intelligent PhD level researchers. They, their paradigm was it's the caloric restriction. There's nothing else we even need to consider. But when you put it in that new light, all of a sudden you're like, no, these, the, all these animals were eating one meal a day, scarfing it down because they were starving to death because they weren't getting the amount of calories that they needed. So is it in fact the time-restricted feeding that's causing the life extension? Or is it a combination of both caloric restriction and time-restricted feeding? I don't know if we know the answer to that. And until further notice, I would much rather eat OMAD one meal a day than I would to eat three meals a day, just tiny little meals. Now, no one even knows for certain if caloric restriction or OMAD, whichever one's actually having the therapeutic benefit, no one knows if that even works in human beings yet because it's kind of hard to do an experiment where you lock humans in a room and feed them 
30% fewer calories than they would like to eat in one meal a day for the rest of their life. And so we theorize, since we are mammals, and this has worked in multiple other species of mammal, that it would have a similar effect in human beings. But I think it's probably the one meal a day, time-restricted feeding, that is causing the benefit. There may be some additional benefit from caloric restriction, uh, but I'm not interested in that. I am very happy with one big giant meal a day full of meat and eggs. I can do that for the rest of my life, but I cannot starve myself for the rest of my life. So I'm going to take a chance that it's not the caloric restriction, or at least not wholly the caloric restriction, that in at least some part, in some degree, it's the time-restricted feeding. It's the one meal a day that is causing the life extension in these animals. I'd love your comments down below about whether you think it's the caloric restriction or the time-restricted feeding or some combination of the two. Do you eat one meal a day? Do you chronically restrict your calories by 30 or 40 percent? There are people out there in the world who do that. I can't imagine what kind of life that is. I certainly wouldn't want to do it myself, but I'd love your comments below.